like to take you all on a walkthrough around the CO2 laser cutter I've been building for the past few months. This is the second version of my laser cutter design. If you would like to see the version 1, you can find it in my channel. I'll also put a link down below. Without further ado, here's my scratch bolt laser cutter version 2. First up is my control panel. In the front is the PC connection. Above that is the DSP controller which controls all machine functions. And then above that is the main key power switch and emergency stop. And here is the ammeter. And on the very top is the air assist control on the left and auxiliary fan control knob on the right. To power on the machine, the e-stop button needs to be depressed and the main power switch needs to be turned to the 3 o'clock position and finally the key needs to be turned. This will set the X, Y, and Z home position. A safety door can be lifted up to access the gantry. When the door is open, the CO2 laser power is automatically disabled. The frame is made out of 2020 aluminum extrusions and the window is made out of 4.5mm tinted acrylic. The door is also supported by gas struts on each side. There is also an LED light strip underneath the door for better visibility inside the machine. Here is the X and Y gantry and motorized Z table. Total working area is 650 by 290 millimeters with a max Z axis height of 730 millimeter. Here you can see the X axis stepper motor at work and here is the Y axis stepper motor. I'm using proximity limit sensors for the X and Y axis and a mechanical limit switch for the Z axis. The motorized Z axis consists of two stepper motors connected in parallel. The table is connected to four ball screws which are connected to timing belts on the stepper motors. The honeycomb table can also be easily taken out of the machine. Behind the small hole is the CO2 laser tube mirror 1 and beam combiner for the red pilot laser. From the tube, it bounces off mirror 1, then mirror 2, and then finally mirror 3, located on the moving head. Then the beam goes through the focusing lens. For my air assist, I'm using a Vever oil-free silent air compressor, which was around $250 Canadian. It's 1 horsepower, and has a capacity of 6.6 .6 gallons and max pressure of 125 psi. It runs at 110 volts. The black thing on the right is the silencer, which works pretty well. Not as quiet as a California Air Tools air compressor, but for the price, I can't complain. There's also a pressure gauge, regulator, and moisture trap already built into the compressor. This green hose is the compressed air supply line. One end connects to the air compressor, while the other end connects to a needle valve. The needle valve is used to control the compressed airflow and pressure going to the laser head and workpiece. Since the valve is located outside of the gantry, airflow and pressure can be increased or decreased during the middle of an operation. The other end of the needle valve connects to the laser head using this green tube. An extra feature of this machine is an auxiliary fan which can be placed anywhere on the table. It's used to blow air parallel to the workpiece and helps to clear out any debris and smoke from both the workpiece and the laser head. The fan speed control is located on the right side of the air assist needle valve. The fan is particularly useful during acrylic engraving when very low air assist flow and pressure is required. Fume extraction is one of the most critical parts of laser cutting. I had to 3D print this custom fume extraction vent so it can perfectly fit inside the gantry. The vent is connected to an aluminum duct which leads to the outside of the machine. On the outside of the machine, there is another aluminum duct that connects to a 6 inch inline fan which is then connected to the outside of my apartment. Since the panels on my laser cutter have seals so the fumes and bad smells doesn't get inside my room, I had to have some fresh makeup air going back inside the gantry so the active exhaust would work properly. To do this, I placed a dryer vent inside the machine and connected it with aluminum ducting to the outside of my apartment. This way, I am pulling fresh air from outside all the time. 
I also made sure that the makeup air vent is as far away from the fume exhaust vent as possible. I also added blast gates to both the makeup air vent and the fume extractor vent so I can close these anytime I'm not running the machine. Here is an example of a cutting operation with the air assist completely off to make sure I get as much smoke as possible. As you can see, the fume extraction is working great and there is barely any smell inside of my room. Since the CO2 laser tube gets hot during an operation, it's also very important to have a properly chilled water system. I'm using a Vever DZ5200 LSQX water chiller filled with distilled water. This was cheaper than the original SNA 5200 chiller, but so far I haven't had any issues. The chiller is connected to the push-in connector for the CO2 laser tube on the back of the machine. I also have fire extinguishers placed right beside my machine just in case of any fire hazards. And just in case you're wondering, this is how I have my room set up. My laser cutter is close to my window and right beside my laser cutter is my 3D printer. And a few feet away from my laser cutter is my work table where I have my laptop. For the software I'm using, I'm using Lightburn for the laser cutter and I also use AutoCAD or CorelDRAW. Now I'm sure you're asking how much this all costs. I don't have an exact number since I did repurpose some parts from my first laser cutter build and incorporated it into this machine. But I would say around 5,000 Canadian dollars is a pretty close estimate. The frame is made out of 2020 aluminum extrusions, which is around $500. And the aluminum panels are another 350. The laser cutting components such as the DSP controller, the gantry, tubes, mirrors, electronics, etc. costs around $2,500. The air compressor is $250. The chiller is around $500. The fume extractor is around $100. And all the hardware such as screws, inserts, hoses, etc. cost me around $400. Plus you have to consider in the time that you'll spend to design and build the machine, plus shipping and taxes. All in all, it took me approximately 3 months from initial design phase to the fully built product. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I hope this has inspired you in any way to consider building your own machine. It definitely is hard work and some parts of the design and build process can be tedious and technical sometimes, but the satisfaction you'll get after you finish a build is something very special. See you guys in the next one. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate your support by subscribing to my channel. Keep laser cutting guys. Cheers.